Hey guys, thanks for tuning into this new episode of the Mindful Steward podcast. Um, I'm still kind of riding a little bit of a high right now. I just finished recording an episode with my friend Ross Cameron. I think uh, it turned out really good. We touched on a lot of cool things. So Ross is a meditation coach and a meditation teacher, and he is a holistic nutritionist. And just in general, he knows a lot of stuff about a lot of stuff. And I find him really interesting to chat with. Um, One of the reasons I wanted to have him on this episode is to kind of discuss and also demonstrate that a lot of these things like nutrition and taking care of yourself and more in particular mindfulness, for whatever reason, they're kind of seen as these topics that are not masculine. They're kind of a feminine thing to be interested in. And um, I think those are really false ways to look at it. I know I used to look at things that way too. But um, there's absolutely tons of space in the masculine sphere to care about your thoughts and care about your feelings and care about your health and your wellness. And I think they actually really help guys like myself and anybody else to actually have more masculine purpose in their life. So um, I don't think that they're a bad thing whatsoever. And it's always cool to learn more about that kind of stuff, at least for me. So if you are enjoying this show, please subscribe wherever you are listening. It just helps me get these platforms to be willing to show this to more new people. And I'm also finally getting really close to releasing these meditation resources that I keep talking about. So there's going to be some guided meditations and there's going to be some ebook stuff. So those are coming out soon and then you can stay on top of that. So I hope you enjoy this episode as much as I did. Yeah, I'm excited for this episode because, well, basically, when I, so we have a mutual friend, Mal, Yeah. and I ran into her and she was kind of just asking some pretty good questions about what my podcast was about when we were chatting about it. And my response was something like really nonchalant, like, yeah, I don't know. It's just some place where I talk to cool people about stuff. And she kind of continued to grill me. And I finally realized, I don't even think she really realized she was grilling me, but I felt like that in the moment. Mm -hmm. And I kind of finally realized that my goal with this is to kind of showcase that mindfulness is not really this feminine topic. Because I personally, at least, see that society kind of perceives it that way. There aren't Mm -hmm. many guys who are openly talking about it yet. It's really a growing movement. But I think that is still something that a lot of typical dudes think about when it comes to mindfulness. That's the way they see it. And I brought that up and that was basically my answer. And she recommended that I connect with you and that we make an episode. So um, you are a meditation teacher. uh, You're a holistic nutritionist. You're you're really involved with a lot of these well-rounded kind of health and wellness approaches. Mm -hmm. So I'm really interested in that stuff. I don't do any of those things for a living. So that's where it's kind of interesting because you're a lot deeper than I am, but I know the surface level of most of the things that you and I have talked about. So it's cool to chat with you and kind of hear the really deep aspects of all of it. For sure. Like the really deep nutrition tips and... And as much as I know, I know nothing at all. I can say that for sure. There's still (laughs) thousands upon thousands, millions, trillions that still out there that I still have to learn you know and uh what's the saying like a wise man knows he knows nothing at all I in that case I'd like to consider myself wise because I literally know nothing at all so (laughs) hopefully I can share some good tips and pointers and what have you but yeah shout out to Mal quick because she's a total goddess and I'm happy that she connected us and that we were able to do this because here we are and just chatting and talking about mindfulness and like you mentioned such a interesting topic um, whether among men, men, humans in general, because there's more to it than meets the eye, and that's for certain. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I'm blown away by mindfulness. You know, the story of my website is actually pretty pretty funny because I picked the name of it, the Mindful Steward, which is now the podcast, literally because I had friends who were kind of they were spiritual writers. They were basically yoga instructors who wrote a lot. And I knew that I was writing a lot more. And I wanted to be able to share their stuff on my website. 
So I picked a brand that suited their content and it didn't even suit me at all. And now more in the year, last year and a half or so, I've got really into mindfulness. I'm going to say two years. Mm. So it's really a funny story because I've had this domain, I've had this brand and I wasn't even into it until like two years in. Uh, but now I get to connect with people like you and whatnot. So it's pretty awesome. But, um, yeah, so there's a lot of different people who I meet who have kind of dove into meditation or they've explored these different things. But I would say for the most part, there's kind of this moment in people's lives where they finally realize that they need to do something about where they're at or they need to deal with something that's going on in their life. So right. I know you've kind of told me this story. If you wanted to touch on yeah. how you dove into this, For sure. this kind of content, that would be the, awesome. The line in the sand moment, if you will, right? Yeah. Life, life changing was, uh, <clears throat> I guess for me, maybe like some people, um, maybe not, but in order to really live, I think some people have to be faced with death. And for me, that came in the form of losing my mother. And so to me, my mother was the person who I loved the absolute most in the world. She was caring, nurturing, as most mothers are, but uh, she just took it to another level, really. And uh, I'm so grateful that she was in my life. Of course, in my teen years, you know, I wasn't as grateful, but that's in the past now, I guess, and uh, I've forgiven myself for that as well. Huge part of healing in general. Um, so I think the two cards that I was given, let's use a poker reference, I was given the mortality card and the immortality card. So mortality in the sense that our life as human beings is impermanent. We, we have a finite existence in this human form at least. and let's take advantage of that. Where I was at before in my life, I was sort of just um, really engaged in the party atmosphere and, and drugs and alcohol and what have you. And it was sort of a type of escapism of me knowing my true soul and my true purpose in, in this life. And it took losing my mother to sort of realize that and to wake up, essentially. Um, so the immortality card was was one that hit pretty hard because essentially I wanted to be there when, when my, my mom passed away and I left school so I could be with her. And the best advice I've ever been given was from her and it was follow your heart. And in that moment, it sort of just, it took over my whole being and, and I've sort of lived my life in accordance to that wisdom. I think when people are close to death, they, they're closer to source energy or God or universal intelligence, whatever you want to call it. And through my mother, she was giving me that message of wisdom to follow my heart and live through my heart, which we can touch on with mindfulness as well and the heart later. But um, yeah, it was that when, when she passed away, the moment I saw it was, was, or not even saw it, but I felt it on an energetic level on every layer of my being was that this is not all there is. We are more than human beings. We are immortal. Um, energy cannot be created nor destroyed, therefore you've actually never been born and you can never die. Which is a really awesome quote from one of the founders of uh, one of the schools I studied at, the Modern Mystery School. We can touch on that as well. Um, that was the meditation school that you... Yeah, so it's sort of like advanced spiritual training. They okay. have a whole bunch of different courses from like astral travel, sacred geometry. Um, they have healing classes and and defense classes and just a great spectrum of the whole industry of spirituality cool, not cool. even industry the, the life really right because we're all we're all spiritual beings and um, whether you believe in that or not it is it is an aspect of every every person on some layer on some level and uh, in order for people to actually fully and truly heal we can get into it later but um, there was a doctor, Dr. Kelly Turner, she did research on spontaneous remission, which I started to look into after my mom passed away because I didn't really have any uh, qualms about how to go about healing at that point. I was still in escapism. But now that I've started to research and study holistic nutrition and study manifestation of disease, so she had brain cancer, which essentially is... Um, 
cancer in general is uh, a cell that is unable to perform apoptosis and it's unable to die and then it proliferates and it grows at a rapid rate because of um, DNA muta mutation as well as there's a list of factors but um, environmental the energetic environment of the person has to be right for cancer to fit and from a metaphysical level it's inability to let go and um, sort of started looking at the full spectrum of holistic health and what that has to do with um, your well-being you know and so there's this doctor Dr. Kelly Turner who looked at radical spontaneous remission and one of the core factors for anybody who healed and from this is not just from like any old let's say cardiovascular disease or heart attack this is this is illnesses that have a very very low life expectancy brain cancers pancreatic pancreatic cancers neurogenerative diseases and essentially one of the core foundations for people to find healing is things like developing a strong reason for living releasing negative suppressed emotions and having some sort of spiritual connection so for me that really hit that that on that nail on the head you know <clears throat> interesting so would that count as a religious practice of any sort yeah so not at all religious i mean all religions have good core values you know what i mean treat other people the way you want to be treated the golden rule that's pretty much it um the mystery school in general speaking on, I guess, their behalf as a representative, as a student, it would be good aspects from all religions, let's say, but non-dogmatic. Okay. The core teachings is about knowing who you are, knowing thyself. And in that study, it's a lifelong study, right? We're always learning, we're always growing. And for anyone to say that they're ever satisfied in, in knowledge, you know, I'd like to question them a little bit more than that. But, um, you know, it's it's just a practice that that has become my life. And it's an adventure, to say the least. Yeah, yeah. awesome. I like that response. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I find it kind of interesting because spirituality, I'm starting to reach a point where I'm going to try and use that word less mm. just so that people who kind of look at that word a certain way don't immediately discount what I'm talking about. Right. You know, because there is a lot of that going on. The disconnect. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But one of my friends who I found the podcast, uh, my friend Brooke, she said it so well. And this is kind of, this is something that I repeat all the time now, but spirituality isn't just an answer, you know, it's a tool mm -hmm. to help you be, to, to help you be something better or right. to help you create something better. Right. And we talked about this a little bit the last time we were hanging out, but, um, this seems like such an obscure topic to put into practice, but it's, it's so simple when you hear it. For sure. And basically something that I've I think really drew me to this kind of content is just this realization that um, we always seem to distance ourselves from the things that we want in a way where we say, I'll be happy once I have all these things, mm -hmm. you know, I'll be successful once I have all these things, I'll be this social butterfly who feels confident and will do all the, whatever I want to do in life once I have all these things layered out. But on a very, very practical uh, viewpoint, you don't have to be looking at this through some spiritual lens. The people who are thriving and doing amazing things, this is very obvious in my friendships at least. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure I notice it everywhere ever since I've been paying attention. But they're the people who put all those feelings and those emotions and those practices first. They just become awesome and they focus on being everything that they want to re reflect it back at them from the world. Exactly. You know? And I think that's where spirituality comes in. You know, you don't have to look at it as if there's some crazy out there thing it's just how do you get more out of life for sure that's the way i look at it exactly and as you mentioned it it was like the destination syndrome right I, i'm only going to be happy if i have x i'm only going to be happy if i have y z whatever um i think joe Dis dr joe dispenza puts it the absolute best is you can't wait for your your healing to feel whole you can't wait for your riches to feel abundant 
and just m more than that, you know, life's about as crazy as it sounds. Is it's at the core level, subatomic particles. It's about vibration and frequency. So if you can attune yourself to that frequency of, let's say, abundance or happiness or love or joy or courage or what have you, you t attune yourself to that and you feel those emotions and you embody it and have it radiate throughout your whole being, the universe works its magic. And, it, and I can only say that from experience because it continues to happen and it continues to show up in, in ways that is totally unexpected. I mean, even meeting you, like it was just a glorious opportunity that, you know, I can sort of now um, share my views on the world and my outlook as I enter into the wellness field. I've been in it for about two years now, but I've dove in. I've really taken the time to, um, you know, not only read research, but experiment within my own being and make sure everything is working for myself. What works, what doesn't work? How am I learning? How am I growing? I mean, the true, um, true meaning of the word education is a juco, which actually means to learn from within. So it's really, really funny how um, people, yeah, people nowadays That's will be cool. like, do you have a degree in this? Do you have a degree in that? Oh, you dropped out of school, oh, this, that, the other. It's just sort of a social conditioning, let's say, to go to school. But the true learning comes from within. And uh, if you want, I could talk about the meditation aspect too. Yeah, but absolutely. I was going to segue into that sure. pretty shortly anyway. Yeah. So There we are. So, yeah. So basically, the word meditation... be actually means comes from the word which means to become familiar with so you're becoming familiar with your subconscious mind the unconscious mind what thoughts are underlying in your life what are what thoughts could be potentially holding you back from reaching that frequency of abundance or or happiness or joy or what have you um, you're becoming familiar with the mind and I know we like to say mindfulness but in, in a sense I like to say mindlessness right because uh, I'll give you this quick question is name me something that uh, essentially your mind is a teach this is a teaching from the mystery school by the way one of the one of the ones that has significantly changed my life and I live my life by as well is name me something good that has come from your mind I'm gonna go with courage okay I <laughs> I love that answer but <laughs> Let's just stem from where that comes from, and it would actually be your heart, right? So the whole teaching is nothing good comes from your mind. It comes from your heart. And your mind's single like um, use, I guess you could say, in the, in the most positive way is to interpret your heart and have it flow into existence. So anytime you're listening to the mind over the heart, there could be a discord or dis-ease in your life. And uh, that's been proven, uh, I mean, Tony Robbins looked at, I forget the actual school of study that he was looking at, I think it was from Heart Math in San Francisco, and essentially it looks at the brainwave states in congruence with the heart wave states. And essentially, when those two are in alignment, you're in more states of joy, more states of happiness, playfulness, and opposed to when the when the two are tuned to different sine waves, so different frequencies, I guess you could say, is that disease and discord in someone's life. And you can, you can spiral it down even further and then go potentially anxiety, potentially depression. And it all has to do, not to put the whole mental health industry under one uh, leaf here, but it essentially has to do at its core with not living in alignment. And there's so many more factors to that. The world is crazy and I totally understand that. But at its core, in yourself and who you are, it's not living in alignment with your heart. And as a dude, that's crazy to say as well, right? Because we're told <laughs> to not share emotions and what have you. Yeah, yeah. But to be honest, since I started doing that, life has been amazing. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, I can resonate with that a lot. Yeah. Um, just before I go on my little mini rant, yeah. I was going to mention actually, so I was on courts yesterday night. Uh, it's like a business website. Okay. And I came across this article about the science of vibrations shows how everything is connected. Mm -hmm. So this is a legitimate business website talking about 
findings in legitimate scientific research showing that things that are vibrating at the same frequencies come together, yes. things that spend so much time together slowly come down to similar frequencies, mm -hmm. all of this stuff. So I found that really interesting. I actually was going to send you it last night, but I'll send you it after this. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, Please do. Yeah, I will. But yeah, I can, I, I really resonate with that because um, I think one, it's almost a blessing and a curse, but it's been almost a struggle that I think I finally slowly figured out. But uh, I spent a lot of my adolescent years just really obsessed with snowboarding. Mm. And it's because I was having a decent amount of success in that sport. But it's now... Your, sorry, now, it's where your heart was, right? Yeah, exactly. And right. I couldn't even describe the amount of obsession I had. And it's kind of a mix of the word obsession and passion. Like I was obsessed, right. but I loved doing it so much. Mm. But then I was kind of like shielding myself from problems in my life by just focusing on snowboarding. And it kind of slowly became something a little different. Um, and I kind of was being told I need to go to contest. There was a certain point where it wasn't just me doing it out of pure alignment, but so I kind of fell out of it. But, um, just the fact that I was able to experience that for so long, I kind of came into the work, the world of the professional world, you know, trying to get a career and whatnot. And I couldn't bring myself to do anything that I didn't like doing. And it's because I've experienced that. It's like when you're in alignment and you know that you're every moment of everything you're doing has a purpose that you're really passionate about. Mm -hmm. It's the best feeling ever. And I feel like it's almost this high that I've been chasing ever since snowboarding I mean I talk about snowboarding as if it's in my past like I love snowboarding I go all the time but it's not the same you know that that was a I was a young dude when I didn't have any cares and worries in the world and I just did what I wanted and I worked as much as I could made enough money to do snow to snowboard all winter and stuff right it was a different time you know but for sure that alignment is amazing for your mind you feel great you feel happy and you connect with people who are just like you and and I'm just going to reiterate what you said. You had no cares and no worries in the world. Imagine what it would be like to live with no worries and no cares. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Throughout your daily life, too. For sure. No stress yeah. ever. Yeah. It's, uh, it's interesting. Like, I was telling you how I deactivated Instagram for a few weeks. Right, yeah. So, I just personally need a little detox because I just felt overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. And realistically, I've been... I've been grinding on a lot of different things in the last few months and I hit this point where I didn't really know what I was doing it for anymore and I started having a hard time actually getting down to being productive on all these things and I almost needed to detach from all of them and detach from Instagram, just kind of all external influences and just remember what I care about right now <laughs> and it was so good for me, you know? just a two or three week time span and I feel like I'm back in that state. Totally. So it's, it's, so, it's a good thing to prioritize. You know? Sounds like floating. You got yeah. rid of all your external stimuli and yeah. you just centered yourself and got in tune with yourself. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. Like a long term float on yeah. a smaller scale. Yeah. Yeah. If that makes sense. <laughs> okay. So I, I have a lot of questions for you. I mean, cool man. Let's do it. This could go on for hours. We're going to try and keep it a little shorter, but sweet. Um, yeah, so what do you think kind of drew you towards um, specifically meditation? And uh, Yeah, so uh, I guess it was what they call synchronicity or what they call um, coincidence, let's say. I saw um, a year actually after my mom had passed away. So in this year, you know, I started to do some personal research on holistic nutrition and how I would actually go about healing someone or even just myself. Um, my mom was a biology teacher, so one of the core lessons of biology is that adapt to survive type thing, the Charles Darwin thing. Not that I agree with everything Darwin says, but that one's a, a good one. So to clue in, to have that awareness to adapt and survive. If something happened to her, something could potentially happen to me, let's see what I can do to mitigate that experience and eliminate it from my life essentially um so i went to a meditation that was synchronistically if that's a word uh, aligned <laughs> on the exact year anniversary that my mom had passed away and i wasn't going to go to it I, I i was called to go to it but you know it just i had to sort of sit with it a little bit we'll say 
and I called my buddy. I'm just like, do you want to come? He said, no. I said, all right, you know what? I just got to do this. I had to do it. And I'm not sure if it was a full moon or not, but uh, anyway, I had written a huge poem about my mom and it was totally from the heart and I posted it and I didn't, it was the first time I had ever sort of came out publicly about my feelings, about how I felt about losing my mom. And so that day in that meditation, I was able to share the poem afterwards, of course, but during that meditation, I went somewhere else. And but what I mean by that is we had such a visual experience where I'm, grow, I'm touching these seeds, I'm with an animal, I'm in the fields, I'm manifesting what my future would look like. I'm looking at a forest with no leaves and then I'm visually building leaves and growth on these trees. And it was by uh, one of my mentors, Alex Hill, and I'll never forget that day that meditation changed my life because meditation in that moment to me meant, oh, you're not not thinking you're using your thought you're using your awareness and you're using these tools to sort of create your reality within this meditative state and to me that just significantly changed me and made me wonder maybe i can facilitate this for other people you know yeah is the short answer i guess <laughs> okay so how soon after that did you start kind of guiding I, sessions on your own guiding sessions on my own would be maybe half a year I started taking a bunch of personal courses with him. He's a teacher at the Modern Mystery School. Okay. And lucky for me, I got one-on-one -on -one sessions with him as well. And that's pretty rare. Amazing. So I consider myself pretty lucky. And yeah, it's just like one of those things, like you said with snowboarding, when, when you're aligned with it and you're in your passion, you go for it and you go for it all out. No cares, no worries. Money. I mean, I had to get a lot of money in order to sort of like be able to take these classes obviously right yeah because there is that energy exchange but i made it work that's all i can say <laughs> cool cool yeah. yeah you know what that's one thing that i pointed out in my kind of recap episode is that all the people who i interview seem to have no stress about investing large amounts of money in their personal wellness and their mm -hmm. personal growth and mm -hmm. um so it's it's just so consistent. I think every single person has, I've had on here has done it. Right. And it's just you mentioning it. The next person I bring on is going to mention it. It's just like a constant theme, you know? Yeah. Invest, investing in... Exact, it's the energy exchange of it. It's, right. it's really like you're getting a lot back for what you're giving. Exactly. You know, it's like... I think that's the best investment is in yourself, right? Yeah, absolutely, man. It's better Whatever. than buying... Whatever else. <laughs> yeah, some sick $800 coat or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. um, I do have a nice $800 coat, though, don't I? <laughs> no, whatever, kidding. man. When you're walking around in Toronto, you need something like that. Yeah. I, I, I don't blame anybody. All right. Shout out to uh, Wuxley for quick time because it's a vegan jacket. I bought it for $777, and it's the best jacket I've ever purchased ever. Really? Oh, man. I'll send you a link. Okay, I'll okay. Link. I mean, I'm probably not going to buy one because I don't need a coat, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. <laughs> why not? Something to learn. Uh, I could try to pick which question here. Whatever you're feeling, man. So yeah, when it comes to your overall wellness, your holistic wellness, if you will, right? Um, what have become your top priorities for feeling fulfilled or, or feeling well in general? Nice. Yeah, for sure. Um, hmm... Okay, I'll give it to you like this. So I have a morning routine and that is the sort of thing that grounds me and keeps me humble and keeps me centered. Um, so the morning routine goes something like this. It's a variation each morning depending on how I'm feeling. But we'll do, you wake up in the morning and what's the first thing you do is celebrate. You have another day, you have another life. Like that's something to celebrate in itself, you know. After that is something that I'm going to trademark. So anyone listening, you can't copy this until I make my YouTube video, please. Uh, <laughs> it's called GAS. It's, and it's an acronym. GAS is G-A-A-S-S-S-S. -S 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 -S, couple S's in there, whatever. It's a lot of S's, man. Yeah. <laughs> Got through two of my name anyway. Um, all right. So GAS. G is gratitude. Gratitude is the antidote for anger, for fear, for hatred. Because there's no way you can feel grateful and angry simultaneously it's just not possible and so 
grateful. Look around your room, you have a bed. That is an incredible, I bet you more than half of the world doesn't have a comfortable bed like you do. You know what I mean? Roof over your head, warmth. Well, I'm only saying that because we're in winter, but you know, water running from your tap. These are all things that we sort of can take it, take for granted here, at least in North America, right? But gratitude, utter gratitude for your life, for not only the things, but the people in your life too, and the, the relationships that you build, our relationship, you know? Grateful for that, grateful for being able to record this podcast. Um, the next one would be feeling abundance because like we have mentioned before, in order to attract abundance, you have to feel abundance first. Next one is uh, awareness, having the awareness to know that there's more than meets the eye. There's, what's the saying is that uh, we, we <laughs> I fall victim to, to this as well, but you often look around at life and think that what you see is what's happening, but there's so much more than meets the eye. In fact, I'll give you this crazy statistic. We see zero point zero zero three five percent of the electromagnetic light spectrum so we see less than one percent of what could potentially be out there wow yeah just i'll let you i'll let you sit with that one i'll go down to the s's okay yeah go on <laughs> the, the s's yeah it's tough I'm losing my mind over here tough to digest that one <laughs> me too man me too uh the s's are just stuff like self-love self-appreciation self-care you know I always make sure I tongue scrape, which is essentially like a scraper for your tongue. It's cl- cleaning your tongue. Flossing is huge. Oral care in general is highly, uh, I guess, not always regarded as a top priority for some people, but it's huge in terms of holistic health. And then those heart affirmations and really setting your energy in, in, in ritual form. And um, so with the Mystery School, I've been given a set of rituals that I have to I don't have to, but I choose to each morning. I choose to to do this to empower myself to feel um, that power and and really live my life in accordance to that in empowerment essentially. Among some other things, some rapid breathing, the Wim Hof we talked about as well. Okay, you do that in the mornings. Yeah, yeah. Okay, it's a and, great. And then you do a cold shower right after too. Dude, it's yeah. People talk about coffee. This is like the ultimate, ultimate morning experience if you want that jumpstart is getting the inner fire going one of my good friends steven who works at flow toronto actually he said <clears throat> he texted me he said hey dude what did you do this morning to set your soul on fire and i just think shit i didn't do anything <laughs> you know what i mean i have this huge list of stuff but i didn't feel that fire right so i now do like the the Conor McGregor, the arm swings, the flailing, whatever you call it. Get my body moving. Oh, yeah. I yeah. need to look into that. Yeah, man. It's about movement. Ido Portal, that's his name. Ido Portal is basically Conor McGregor's movement coach. And dude is a wizard when it comes to bodily movement. It's so cool. Anyway, um, get that fire going with the breath. You know, bring it into your diaphragm. Bring it into your inner costals and your ribs, bring it into your clavicles at the top and just sort of get all of that breath in and oxygenate the body, alkalinize the blood, and you will feel like a new person, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking deep breaths over here, just <laughs> reminding myself to breathe. Right? Yeah. Okay. So I got to say that too, especially on Instagram, I always do that is just post like a, hey, remember to breathe. How often do people forget to just breathe? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, anybody listening to this podcast, let's just take a moment here and just have a nice breath. Get a couple deep ones. Yeah, just a really nice breath, deep into the whole body. I know, um, <laughs> there's this one stat I keep hearing over and over. For some reason, all the podcast guys I listen to keep mentioning it lately. Um, and Wim Hof was one of them. But if you take six really deep breaths in a row, mm. it starts sending... A little more, I can't remember if it's dopamine or serotonin. It shoots like a, a little burst of it out and then it stops the cortisol, like the stress response. You're, so, yeah, you're eliciting the relaxation response within your body. Yeah, so just all it takes is 60 breaths and it lowers your mm. blood pressure instantly. Mm. That, you know what I mean? That's all it takes to at least start it. Right. So if you're sitting there and you need to relax a little more, just breathe for a moment. Yeah, deep dive you know? traumatic breaths. I can yeah. it takes thirty seconds. Yeah. There we go. Tip yeah. one oh one. Yeah. 
That's something I keep hearing. Office yoga, like some serious <laughs> thing. Just sit there and start yeah. breathing. Yeah. Hey, Jim, what are you doing? I'm just breathing, man. Chill out. <laughs> I've been doing that more and more, and I, I like subtly do wonder if anyone else is noticing how deeply I'm breathing, which is so funny. But um, I'm just waiting for somebody to mention it, and then I'll just tell them, no, you know six breaths. Yeah. You know what it does. As Richard Branson says, screw it, just do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so that's called grounding, right? The morning routine. Or is that called rooting? I've heard a few different terms, or do you even use a term for it? I don't use a term, but okay. what I would call it, grounding I, I think of as like putting your feet barefoot on the earth, which has been shown scientifically to have so much benefit because you're essentially touching the earth that we're on. Let's just pause for a moment and realize that we're floating in a planet and like suspended in this limitless galaxy pretty much. You know what I mean? To put your feet on the act, instead of having shoes on, put your feet on the actual platform that we're all on is pretty magical. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I'm just thinking of my one friend, Andy. Uh, we were living in Costa Rica one winter and his goal was to develop such giant calluses on his feet that he never had to wear mm. shoes the whole trip. Ooh. And he went, I swear to God, he probably went almost two months barely wearing sandals once. Really, eh? And I don't think it worked. I, I don't think it worked. worked. I don't think he developed calluses big enough to keep doing it. He probably just he probably just ended up adapting himself. He didn't need the calluses. Yeah, much. I think he just got used to his like walking on sharp stones and not caring anymore. Right. I don't even think his calluses got that thick. This would just be an awesome time. We'll go back to it quickly. I'll just mention it quickly. It will be the shoes. Remember I showed you the shoes? Yeah. Vivo barefoot. So they're designed so that you actually activate your toes. And uh, essentially your, your hands and feet have the same amount of uh, neurons. So just like your hands are supposed to feel everything, which by the way is just sensory receptors letting your brain know that this exists. We're, we're actually never touching anything. There's still space in between things because molecules are so, so small. And then there's like 99% of a molecule is actually just space. Back to the frequency vibration. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's crazy. It's a hole. It's a wormhole. Oh, I know. You could talk about that for hours. But yeah, the Barefoots, amazing shoes. I'm probably going to affiliate market on my website. Should I drop the website now or maybe at the end? But uh, Do you have your website up? It's, it's, in, it's still in the forging stages. It's still in those fires. Okay. You know? But uh, it's going to be called Double O Lux, and it is literally 00LUX, which means... Uh, in Kabbalistic terms, zero is, sorry, excuse me, double zero is limitless, and lux in Latin is light. So limitless light will be the site, and I will have the Vivo Barefoots on there eventually. Awesome. Yeah, I love that concept. I mean, I'm hesitant because I wear insoles because I have low arches on my feet. Mm. So for me, it's a little weird where my ankles would start hurting, in theory, if I didn't wear my... I think it would take a long time, but it just wouldn't be good for the alignment of my feet. And the, the shoe sort of works like a sponge. like It's like almost like memory foam in the first few days, and it sort of molds to how your foot walks. Uh -huh. Not just how your foot sits in a shoe, but how you walk. Yeah. You know, And then you start to activate the toes more, which they have a whole bunch of like actual books on this, and they teach you how to walk. Again, isn't that a crazy concept? Like activating your toes and walking. Walk properly, yeah. like a caveman. Yeah, seriously. Um, so yeah, I mean, we have, and yeah, I'll, uh, once your website is up, I'll throw it in the Sweet. description for this. Appreciate it. I had to plug myself, you know? <laughs> yeah, you got it. You got it. That's the whole point of this, right? Um, hmm, so I could get on to nutrition questions, but... Yeah. I kind of want to ask this. I'm going to blend these two questions, but when it so, comes to books and people, mm. who would you say has influenced your life the most or who is currently? Uh, books and people? I'll give you like... Yeah. I'll Just give, give a few major sure. ones. Okay. So, um, Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell is like one of the first books that I actually fought, like read in my life start to finish. And it essentially tells you about the science of achievement and what it takes scientifically to achieve. Let's say you want to become a master pianist or you want to become a chef or a dirt biker, what have you. Uh, scientifically, 
what opportunities will lie in your path in terms of, you know, you need the 10,000 hours to technically be considered the professional, the master in a certain subject. That was huge because it was sort of like, how do I uh, reverse engineer, let's say, becoming a meditation teacher or holistic practitioner? How do I get those 10,000 hours in? It's literally just work, right? Work, yeah. immerse yourself. Dedication. You exactly. can't, you can't exactly. succeed without discipline. Exactly. But yeah, yeah, I'll let you go on. Yeah, no, no, you, you nailed it. The other one is uh, The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho. I think I saw that one. You had that one? Yeah, I've yeah. read both of these books. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Yeah. The, the Alchemist was the first book that really, uh, how to put it, showed me that the magic of the universe is possible and that we each have our, our life mission and our life purpose and the purpose of life is to live a life of purpose, right? I think it was Richard Lair with that, with that quote. I would agree with that. But yeah, don't call me. But yeah, and then in terms of people, just like, there's so many people, there's so many inspirational people that have existed to just name a few, you know what I mean? Uh, I think, not to sound cliche or not to sound even religious, because to be honest, I, I'm really not religious at all. It's more spiritual for me, but I guess like Jesus the Christ, if you know that guy. Yeah, <laughs> just yeah like I think I've heard of him. How he walked in his life was between a healer and a warrior. You know what I mean? He said, fuck you to evil. Not actually. He was a little more elegant than that. I don't even know. I don't even know the guy. Um, but according to the teachings, this is what he was. Is, is He would say no to this and he would help heal people. And I think the hippie movement, you know, you're hitting on the he healing people and you're hitting on the peace and love. But you're not changing the paradigm without realizing that there is negative shit out there and you have to change it. And in order for the world to change, that negative shit has to change. So many levels that still exists, obviously, because the world is crazy that we live in. But having the d duality, the balance of walking both healing and, and warrior. So essentially like a Jedi that can heal people. You know? that's, my, that's my life purpose. <laughs> Just see myself a lightsaber. <laughs> yeah, not bad. That's your purpose? Is that what you said? Yeah. Okay, okay. Cool. Well, that's a bit, that's a, not what I expected you to say, but that's, that's awesome. Roll with it. Yeah. Okay, so man, nutrition, I could talk about that all day because it's like, yeah, let's there's do it. so much to talk about. Uh, let me see how long. Yeah, so we got like almost 20 minutes. Sweet. Um, before we hit the hour mark. So, um, for myself personally, I tried veganism a little bit, mm -hmm. barely at all, just during a cleanse, just to kind of emphasize my results. Right. I told you about that. And, um, and you know, it didn't really work for me. And most of my supplementation, if you will, is all nutrients that are good for your head. You know, right. like I take omega threes and neurotropics. They're all neuro neurotropics, you know, yeah. because I eat healthy enough that I don't believe. Uh, Do you? You could, you could, yeah, I know. <laughs> Talking to you, I know you're like super healthy. Um, but my approach is more like eat well, exercise well, take care of your spiritual, like yeah. mental mm. aspects. Yeah. Um, because I'm learning more and more about how much that totally. plays into the whole picture. But. I more so am trying to prioritize nutrients that help my, my mind feel good. Cause I think everything good. roots from your mind. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I guess I'm just going to ask cool. you like what your approach is to feeling when good. it comes to nutrition and wellness mm. and holistic well being. For sure. Well, it's such, yeah, such a broad topic too, just cause there's so many aspects to a, a person, right? <laughs> We're just this meat-coated skeleton with different hormones and blood flowing through our veins and oxygen and, you know, carbon dioxide, the whole cycle. We're just this this being, you know what I mean? And we have to take care of it on every level. So nutrition's a huge part of that. Nutrition's a part of that, especially for the brain, because the brain is made up of, you know, cholesterol, saturated fat, monosaturated fat. EPA, or sorry, a little bit of EPA, DHA, so the omega-3s, omega-6s as well. Um, 
So, yeah, like you said, in order for your mind to feel good, you have to be eating well, right? And it, it's a huge, there's, a, there's so much more to it than meets, meets the bod, I guess. But to put it simply for, for people to sort of understand is that old saying of you are what you eat is actually a thing. So you're taking something, and, and I'll put it like this, eating for most people is honestly more intimate. They have a more intimate relationship eating than they do having sex. Mm, there's only one reason that I'll say otherwise, but um, essentially you're taking something outside of your body and you're putting it into your body and it is breaking down and assimilating and becoming your body, becoming regions of, of muscular skeletal system or what have you, right? you're rebuilding your body with the food that you eat. So it makes you think about food in a whole other way because am I gonna eat this donut again? Am I gonna eat these chips again? Is this what I want to be, right? Or do I wanna be raw, organic, live, lots of nutrients, lots of phytonutrients and enzymes um, and bioflavonoids, all those good, rich, colorful foods do I want to have life behind my energy? And, and food is the way that we survive, right? Same with water. Water is huge as well. We're 75, a good hydrated person is 75% water. And um, so drink good water. Drink good water. Drink yeah. really, really good water. I guess I have to plug myself again, but I'm going to have Berkey Water Filters uh, affiliate on my website as well. So I actually spent. <laughs> This is crazy. I spent six grand on a water system. I have an, uh, an ionizer from Kangen, which essentially adds molecular hydrogen to the water. Molecular hydrogen has been shown in multiple studies that it aids or uh, mitigates disease in the top eight diseases listed by the CDC, the Center for Disease, of, Disease Control. Um, so that's what the ionizer does. Then I put that water, which will only last three days with the molecular hydrogen in it, to my Berkey filter, the Berkey filter gets rid of you know fluoride, chlorine, which are um, endocrine disruptors. So they disrupt your hormone regulation from your endocrine glands, like your uh, pineal gland, your pituitary, yeah. thyroid, um, thalamus, your gonads, your ovaries, um, which secrete or uh, excuse me, no, uh, is a adrenal glands. I can't believe I missed that one. Stress hormone, right? <laughs> cortisol. Um, so it's deviating that norm. And you want to be drinking good filtered water because water is the conductor of life, right? Water is life. That was the saying, I think, for the uh, North Dakota pipeline. The water is life. Forget what it actually is in, in their language, and I don't want to butcher it or anything, but that's what it is, right? And it's that full full spectrum. But bringing it back to your mind and, and thoughts as well, I think what people don't realize is how your intention can change the food you eat and can change the water that you consume. So this is done by Dr. Masaru Emoto, where intention can, can literally change the structure of a water molecule. If you say, I love you to water, it doesn't sound like much, but you have to mean it, obviously. If I say I love you to water versus I hate you to water, the I love you water molecules will freeze in like a sacred geometry crystalline structure. The water from the I hate you is just a blob. And this has yeah. been sh like looked at under a microscope. I know. And, you know. For, for all the skeptics out there, this is real science. <laughs> it's kind of, ju it's just mind blowing. Yeah. Se <laughs> seriously. Yeah. So I'd advise people to look into that too. So Dr. Masaru Emoto, he did some really cool research with the water, but Above all that, whether, so I, I was hardcore, hardcore vegan for two years and to the point where I wouldn't eat my grandmother's pumpkin pie because it wasn't vegan, which is brutal because my grandma might not be around that much longer and she makes the fucking best pumpkin pie and I'm sitting there like, no, I'm not eating it, man. It's not vegan. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's, that's destructive to my own health. Right. So I had yeah. to sort of come to that realization. And then obviously in studying holistic nutrition, you know, I'm learning about cholesterol and its need for the body and how we'll make cholesterol, whether, whether we eat it in our diet or not, because essentially a vegan diet is cholesterol free. And so cholesterol, you know, obviously, uh, fermented fish liver, liver oil, I started taking, oh my God. Interesting. My it's fermented. Fermented. Yeah. Okay. It just changes like 
the structure as well as you're getting a slight hip probiotics as mm-hmm. well. Okay, um, makes sense. But yeah, man, just it's the full spectrum. So giving gratitude for the food that you're able to eat is a game changer. So what I mean by that is bring back the sacredness and holiness that let's say an Aboriginal culture would have. You know, if we kill a buffalo, all right, we're going to use all of it. We're going to thank its spirit and give thanks for everything that it went through in having to die. Just like an avatar, you know, what do they do? They kill it and they say, I see your spirit. Well, no, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> whatever it was. Yeah, whatever it was. Yeah. I tried to nail it, but I probably, probably messed it up. Um, so, yeah, essentially just saying whatever it is. If it is a cauliflower or if it's chicken or what have you, fish, well, um, kale, whatever's on your plate. Just saying thank you for your energy. Thank you for allowing me to consume you. And I'm going to use your light and whatever is in you to benefit me in my life so that I may have better relationships, I may have more joy, I may have more love in my life. And if that's a prayer you want to have before your meal, then do it. But just giving a little bit of thanks can go a long way. That's so interesting. Yeah. Um, I got two more questions I'm going to ask you, but cool. it's funny because I have one friend in London who's a holistic nutritionist and I was actually, where was I? I don't know. I think I was on a beach with a bunch of friends and we were literally like drinking, having fun on the beach, um, having a bonfire. And I was eating these cookies and I said it out (laughs) loud that I shouldn't be eating these. I was like, ah, this, I've eaten so much shit today. Right. And she looked at me and said, Hey, don't, don't say that. Um, like part of you digesting and eating that food is what you're telling yourself while you're eating it. Right. And I had never thought about this ever until she told me. And she was like, tell yourself that you've been eating super healthy all week and you deserve a little treat. Mm. Like if you told yourself that and ate, ate that cookie, like it doesn't matter. Yeah. But if you're telling yourself how bad it is as you're, as you're munching on it, yeah. like it's just an interesting way to look at it. You know, I've never thought about that. No doubt. And how I could put it as well with that is, um, Ayurvedic doctors. Actually, I looked into one and, uh, he was seeing a, a client, a patient who essentially, uh, was hardcore vegan. And he told him, Hey man, you know what would be the absolute best thing for you to do right now? Because I can tell by your energy. Go enjoy a cheeseburger. And obviously, you know, he, he was like, no way I'm doing this at first. But whatever. He came around to it. He felt the best he's ever felt. Sometimes it's it's can be healing in Those a way. Those blocks. Too, it's like way. resistance. It is. It's like carrying resistance. It totally is resistance. Um, which is basically just voluntary stress. Yeah. I'm going to choose to carry this around and (laughs) give a shit about stuff that doesn't matter. I choose to partake in this. Yeah. Choose. Yeah. That's hilarious. Um, so you don't have to go into super detail, but how do you eat? Mm. What kind of foods do you eat now that you know all of this stuff? Right. Um, again, I know nothing at all, but (laughs) mm -hmm. what I, but you know some for sure. Uh, what I do eat now is predominantly plant-based I do, like, I'd say 99% of my diet is almost plant-based, but I always try and buy organic as often as I can, and that's just because the studies have even shown that herbicides and pesticides react with hormones within the body and can can literally change your physiology um, because they're toxins at the end of the day, right? So buying organic is always better, and as well as you're supporting organic farmers and I've had the chance to meet a couple and I tell you they're just at least they weren't putting on front I could tell from their energy they're hardworking people who care about other people's health there are the farmers out there the conventional who just don't necessarily you know they're just doing for the buck and unfortunately that intention is going into the food as well right from right from where it grows as well as they use different tactics like uh, essentially every civilization that's ever lived on the earth sorry, I'm going off on a rant, um, has never outlived its soil. And so organic farmers use uh, different tactics of remineralization to get, let's say you grow celery on the land, and then let's say you grow celery on the land again, and then again, you're utilizing the same nutrients. The celery needs the same nutrients in the soil to grow, right? Mm-hmm. So each time 
you need more nutrients. And they say fertilizer. Fertilizer is NPK. You're only using three minerals of the broad spectrum of minerals out there. 108, I believe. 180? I don't know. Some number of delicious minerals that make our food nutritious, that actually are the cofactors in our body to to digest food and to operate our brain and to move, right? We need those minerals. But yeah, my diet essentially right now, uh, I don't know, I'll walk you through a quick one, would be like, let's say oats in the morning. Oats are a nervine relaxant, so they're good for your nervous system, help to relax and uh, in a way mitigate stress. Um, oats, you know, fruit. I like jungle honey because honey is actually, actually an antibacterial antifungal it's good for your throat it's good for immune boosting um, and then I'll do yeah a little bit of fruit in there as well lunch will be like I don't know let's say uh, I'll have eggs once in a while I'll always soft boil the eggs so that you're not oxidizing the oak you're still getting the good proteins the good fats and all that jazz okay um, I do have like I said the fermented uh, cod liver oil that would be the only other animal product that I have in my diet right now other than that you know it's predominantly plant-based sweet potatoes um, chickpeas I'm a huge fan of hummus hummus is its own motherfucking food group you know <laughs> it's that delicious but uh, yeah man I, and here's the thing is we're our bodies are always changing we're always changing there's never one diet that'll work with you for your whole life you're gonna change the climate you you eat in as well changes Example, we're in Toronto, Canada right now. I have a mango tattooed on me. And I'm a huge king of mangoes. But for me to eat a mango right now is sort of going against the seasonal, like the climate. And if I, yeah, it's available at like, let's say the sweet potato or Whole Foods or what what have you. But it's just I, Ayurvedic perspective too. You have to eat at the right season, the right time and all that jazz. So... Um, you know, never hold yourself to one diet and so, sometimes the best thing for you would be, you know, maybe to cheat a little bit if the moment is right. You know what I mean? Yeah. You can't yeah. use that excuse too often. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, essentially just back to that whole idea of what you eat will become you. Put good energy into it and get good energy out of it. Have some nice poops, you know, <laughs> and you're good. <laughs> Have some nice poops. Yeah, it's <laughs> true. Good, good advice. Everybody yeah. poops. It's a good sign. Got, gotta have some great bowel movements in there. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so I think I'm trying to remember this question. This is a good final question, though. So, yeah. what do you think is the one thing that people can do that that will help them? That will help them. You mm. know, the one biggest, most important thing. Takeaway from this, I guess. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I mean, there's so many, but at the core, I think would be the mystery school teaching. The greatest thing someone can do for themselves is to know thyself on all layers, on all layers of your being, spiritual, mental, emotional, physical, whatever you want to call it, psychological, knowing yourself and knowing why you are alive on this planet, what your purpose is, where did you come from? Where are you going? I mean, those are drastic questions, but to have a really good introspective look at why you are on this planet and what you are meant to do would be huge, <laughs> would be the biggest one I can possibly say. And I know that part of my purpose is to help other people at least see the light within themselves, have them smile and be happy, but more than be happy because happy is just... I'd rather use the word joy because joy is in the moment, right? You're experiencing in the moment and living life in the moment is so key because we only really have the now moment, right? Life is just a bunch of now moments and then another now moment and then another now moment and then another now moment. And so if you can know thyself and if you can be joyful in your life, love yourself, love others, be kind to others. And uh, yeah, I think I think that would be the best thing I could leave on I love it yeah. that's so funny because <laughs> I was reading an article just before I left work today about uh, dropping resistance mm. and basically the whole thought that once you know yourself really well you don't 
really feel this crazy need to control how everything turns out for you anymore and you can enjoy it right you can enjoy the process (laughs) so i love that (laughs) that's perfect that's a perfect connection awesome well that's a good point to cut it at good stuff man well i appreciate it so much thank you for having me as well yeah absolutely uh i'm pumped that you could join this episode sweet we'll do it again sometime sounds good my man